Hey guys, welcome to another video for biology. In this video, we're looking at section two and chapter three, terrestrial biomes. Uh, what this section does is essentially uh, it highlights the different, uh, it highlights how we break up Earth into different biomes. And these biomes are differentiated by, uh, by the type of plant life they have. And that plant life is dependent on how much rain and how much sun it gets. So one of the more one of the really important aspects of this particular section is we're looking at um, how different parts of Earth have different plants and because of the different weather patterns that they have, is we really got to look at Earth and how it's positioned uh, in relation to the sun. So as you know, the sun you know shoots rays towards the Earth all the time, and based off of the positioning of the sun, certain parts of the Earth are going to get more sunlight than others. And because of that, you're going to have different weather patterns, which means you'll have different types of plant life. So, uh, and again, we're looking at terrestrial biomes. So we're only looking at uh, the earth and its plant life as it is. So we're not looking at animal life necessarily, um, e even though that does determine a lot of uh, the different animals and, and where they live and, and how they live. Now, uh, of course, you'll find uh, species of animals that are in different biomes because they've just adapted to those biomes. So we're gonna, uh, for the most part, right now in the beginning anyways, we'll just talk about how how the sun rays affect the different biomes that we have on Earth. So as you can see, the, um, the part of the Earth that gets the most direct sunlight is called the equator. Okay, and that's a red line that you see there that running, that's running straight down the middle of the Earth. How you figure out latitude, you start at zero degrees, which is the equator line. Okay, so you start at zero degrees, and what you can do is, as I'm looking at Earth here that's, you know, flat on the screen, you know, it goes up 30 degrees. That 30 degree point will make a, a latitude line. Then you can make another one at 60 and all the way to 90 in the North Pole. And of course, you can do all of the ones in between, like 21, 22, 23, or what have you. So, but just as a starting point, how do you figure out what latitude is? Is starting at the equator at zero and you can go all the way up to 90 at the North Pole. Okay, so let's examine this a little bit closer. So let's go to the center of the Earth. Okay, so we're kind of taking out a chunk of the Earth here, and we're going to the center of the Earth. And again, we're only looking at the latitude line. So ignore the longitude for um, for now, and we're only looking at latitude. So let's say from the from the equator, we go a hundred degrees. I'm sorry, not hundred degrees. We go thirty degrees up. So you can see that line going up thirty degrees, and as you can see at at the latitude 30 degrees and longitude 90 degrees, we reach a point in the United States. You can't really see there because the U.S. is kind of curving away from us. But th there's a point there at 30 degrees latitude, 90 degrees longitude. And that point is New Orleans, right? Okay, and that's 30 degrees from the equator, north of the equator, that is. So there it is again, there's New Orleans. At 30 degrees latitude, 90 degrees longitude is New Orleans. Now you'll notice that there's a line going through New Orleans and it's wrapping around, it's circumventing the entire globe. So everything on the globe at that 30 degree line, 30 degrees from the equator, right? Everything on that line will have, for the most part, a similar climate. And that's the weather, what the weather patterns, the average weather patterns uh, a, an area of the planet will get throughout a year. Okay, and that's essentially how we how the climate is affected by the latitude of a particular uh, place on the planet. Okay, all right. So let's let's expand on this a little bit more now. So what we're looking at here is you're looking at a graph that you have in your text, and I want I want to kind of show you how you you read this graph. So if you're looking at the x-axis, that's average temperature. We're going from uh, was it negative twenty? or negative, 30, yeah, negative 20 degrees on the left, or zero degrees, all the way to uh, 30 degrees Celsius. So that's like 100 plus degrees. Now on the vertical, on the y-axis, you have annual precipitation. That's how much rain they get per year per centimeter, uh, by centimeter. So you have anywhere from zero all the way up to 400 centimeters of rain per year. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at the bottom. We're gonna start from the lowest amount of rain and work our way up. So here I have highlighted the tundra and the desert. So these are essentially both deserts, okay? So we're looking at the tundra. The tundra is a treeless biome with layer of permanently frozen soil. So with permanently frozen soil, you can get a lot of plant life, right? So temperatures range, range from negative 70 degrees Celsius to 
uh, 12 Celsius. Average precipitation is 12 to uh, 15 to 25 centimeters per year. So not a lot of rain, as you can see. And these locations, geographic locations for these, are in the south, polar ice caps, and the northern hemisphere. So these are very, these particular places in terms of latitude are almost at 90 degrees or at 90 degrees from latitude. So at the very north pole or the or at the very south um, south pole. Now, despite that, you still have animals that live there. They, it's very tough living, uh, but somehow these animals manage to survive there. So from tundra, we go to a more traditional desert that we are used to, like let's say in the U.S., as a high from 20 degrees to 49 degrees Celsius and a low of negative 18 to negative 10. Now, again, with the tundra, you have really cold temperatures. With the uh, deserts, you have you can also have very cool temperatures at night, but also really hot temperatures during the day. Now, what makes these biomes what they are, and what makes these categories place in the same area is the fact that it is the amount of rainfall that they get. So as you can see here, the average rainfall would be 2 to 26 centimeters a year. Okay, And deserts are all over the continent. So these are um, these are actually pretty, pretty low on the latitude line. Um, so let's kind of look at that here. So we have tundra and deserts. Again, what puts them in that category, in almost the same category, is the fact that they both get very little rainfall. So one of the things that they have in common is that they're at a low latitude. Now there are other factors that make a desert a desert. For example, uh, you have you have the shadow effect, where if you have mountains on one side blocking wind and blocking moisture, one side of the mountain range that is very green, a lot of precipitation, and then on the other side of the mountain range, it'll be very dry and desert-like. So there are multiple factors that go into that play into making a desert what it is, uh, but the main factor is is lack of precipitation. So let's let's make our way up a little bit. So from the tundra and desert, we're going to go up. We're going to increase our rainfall, and we're going to talk about boreal forest and grasslands and savannas. So now we have areas that have a little bit more rainfall, right? They have a little bit more rainfall, which means they're going to have different plant life, which will also support a little bit more uh, animal variety. So a boreal forest is a dense evergreen or coniferous forest. Temperatures range from negative uh, 54 to 21 degrees Celsius. Precipitation is now 30 to 84 centimeters a year. And we're talking about North America, uh, the north part of North America. Uh, Seattle, for example, is uh, very much uh, a boreal forest. Now, there's actually areas in the, in the Washington area that do have rainforest, um, but for the most part, like in Seattle, and just that uh, western Washington has a, a boreal forest uh, atmosphere, and uh, Seattle. If you look at the um, if you look at the long latitude of Seattle, uh, Europe, England, for example, has that same latitude. Germany, and those are areas that are also well known for being cloudy and rainy parts of the world and so, and parts of Asia as well. We also have temperate uh, grasslands in that area. These have fertile soils that are able to support thick cover of grasses which again can, uh, can support a variety of animal life. Okay, so remember, this, the name of the game for this is the amount of precipitation that it has. And where it lies in the latitude plays into that uh, a lot. So you'll find temperate grasslands in North America, South America, Asia, Africa, Australia. So we're looking now at tropical savanna. And tropical savannas are characterized by the tall grasses and the scattered trees that you were that you would see in a typical African landscape. Uh, very beautiful tall grasses and trees, trees that you you only see in, in, in Africa. Now, actually, Africa is not the only place where you'll find tropical savanna. You also find this this uh, biome in uh, South America and Australia. So the summers are pretty hot and rainy, and the winters are cool and dry. The temperature range from 20 to 30. Uh, degrees Celsius, so it's fairly stable. And one of the the defining uh, abiotic factors here again is precipitation at 50 to 130 centimeters compared to grasslands that receive less. Because of this rainfall, you have grasses that grow pretty tall, uh, and you have the scattered trees. So you have a lot of animals that feed off of these grasses, uh, such as rhinos, zebras, ostriches, and lions, giraffes. Now, of course, whenever you have animals that are vegetarian, you're most likely going to have animals that are not vegetarian, such as lions and cheetahs. So, um, 
So this is what you're basically going to, this is what you're typically going to find in your tropical savannas. And that's the boreal forest, tropical savannas, and grasslands. So let's make our way up, temperate forest and tropical seasonal forest. So now look at the uh, rainfall. Now we have 38 to 100 centimeters per year. And we're looking here at the Mediterranean Sea, the west coast of North and South America, uh, South Africa and Australia. Okay, so remember that uh, for when we're looking at the latitude, you know, let's say you go up 40 degrees, right? Well, remember, you can go 40 degrees north and 40 degrees south of the, of the uh, equator line. So you're going to have a complementary um, biome north of the equator line and south. Okay, so Australia has, uh, you know, it's actually probably more famous for its deserts, but uh, they also have temperate grasslands that support a lot of wildlife also. Okay, so um, let's go to the next one, temperate forest. Okay, we're looking at 75 to 150 centimeters per year. So we're looking at eastern, uh, eastern North America, the Appalachian Mountains, eastern Asia, Australia, and Europe. Okay, very uh, wooded areas. These are composed of broad level deciduous trees. Deciduous trees meaning that uh, uh, unlike, unlike our boreal forest, temperate forest, uh, if it's in the word temperate, it, it changes as the seasons change. So for example, there are areas in the, Appala in the Appalachians that, uh, you know, I've actually never seen, I've seen it, but I've not spent a lot of time uh, in, in the east where I've gotten to really enjoy uh, the, the, fall, the foliage there in the fall. There you'll see some, I mean, it's, it's beautiful the way it looks, orange, yellow, red leaves. Um, in the fall that produce a lot of beautiful color. So in the boreal forest, for example, you have evergreen trees where they evergreen, they stay green throughout the entire year, regardless of the temperature. Okay, so those are your temperate forests. So now let's look at tropical rainforest. As you can see here, now we're looking at a ton of rain here. So we're looking at thick foliage, a lot of trees and a lot of variety of animals. We have 200 to 1,000 centimeters of rain per year. Okay, so you have large amounts of rainfall throughout the year, very warm temperatures. This is found this is found really close to the equator line or at the equator line essentially. Okay, so this is where it gets the most sun and uh, if you get the right right weather patterns you're going to have very lush, humid, uh, thick rainforest. Uh, so this is found in Central America, South America, the rain, Amazon rainforest, Asia, Western Africa, the Congo, where you have uh, also where where you'll find gorillas, northeastern Australia. It's humid all year, hot and wet. Okay, so for now, this is where we'll stop. Where we looked at the different terrestrial biomes. Thanks for watching, guys, and good luck in your study.